Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or MNR Productions with a set that I surprisingly have not reviewed yet. Despite having purchased this when it came out back in 2015, I haven't made a review of it yet. So here we go. I'm really excited about this one. This is uh, of one of my favorite ships in Star Wars history, the Imperial Shuttle. Of course, my favorite Lego Star Wars set ever is the UCS version of this. And this is a really good and well done playset. When it was released in 2015, this set was $100 and adjusted for inflation. That's about $110 in 2020 money. It's set number 7509. And four includes 397 pieces, five of those minifigs down there, and its official name is the Imperial Shuttle Tiderion. The box art shows off the Death Star 2 out in space there above Endor. It's a beautifully designed box art, one of my favorite ever, I think. Just looks great. Of course, the Rebels logo there on the top right. The back of the box will show off all the features of the set, and something weird about this box art is that a lot of it is animated. Usually, it's like this. It's not animated, right? There's a lot of animated stuff here on the right side of the box, so that's just something that I found a little bit awkward about this set, but they're kind of recreating scenes for Return of the Jedi, so that's neat. Here's the Imperial shuttle kind of landed there, so that's everything the shuttle can do, which we'll take a look at momentarily, but let's get a look at those minifigs. The first minifigure up is Chewbacca here, and he looks just like your normal Chewbacca minifigures you've been getting for the better part of the last decade, just pretty on par here, like you got the normal face there with the shaggy hair coming down in that lighter color of brown, and then you also have that same color printed down on the legs. Pretty standard standard character and he does come with a crossbow but I've lost that to time. Han Solo is next and he is looking pretty dang good. Kind of looks like he's wearing a trench coat <laughs> which is kind of funny uh, but yeah I don't love the leg print on this. I actually think it looks a little bit awkward. Uh, I had to find these legs and when I put them on there I was like oh without that. I mean I, it looks good and continuous but it just doesn't look that great to me. It looks awkward. I don't know maybe it's just because the legs are printed on the brown and the torso is printed on the tan. I bet that doesn't help too much with my perception there. He has the regular old Han Solo hair there pretty flat. Regular old expression nothing crazy going on. Underneath on the second side, you'll find a nice smirk though, which I actually quite like. Some camo there printed onto the back side as well. He'll come with a small blaster uh, in this set. Pretty nice looking Han Solo figure. One of the better Endor Han Solos we've gotten. The Princess Leia is probably the highlight for a lot of people in this set. She does also include a cookie to feed to the Ewoks, I think is what happens in the movie. So uh, that I've also lost the time, but that's included in the set. Uh, I really love the piece that they gave her, her bit of camouflage, that cape piece that goes over both sides of her torso. Really nice piece printed in a nice camouflage color there. Underneath, she actually also has a really good torso print, which is going to be really underappreciated because it's covered up by this uh, cape piece all of the time. So just really nice printing there underneath, even though it wasn't really necessary, which I can appreciate, but also still feel like is always a waste because you're never going to see it, given that most people are going to put on that cape piece. Her second face is a very nice smile there, as opposed to the front face, which is a more of a serious look. And we'll put that hair piece back on that typical Leia hair piece for episode six there. So let's move on to our Rebel Troops. Rebel Trooper number one here is one that I've never loved because I don't really understand what's going on on his face. Like that beard or whatever that's supposed to be just always looked so awkward to me. I think that's supposed to be a mustache over a beard, but again, I don't think that's ever translated well into Lego. It looks good enough though. I don't really love the discoloration of the little bags that he's got around his waist there. You can see how they change color going from a lighter olive green to a darker olive green from the torso to to the waist print there. A little bit awkward, but still nice enough figure. Love the helmets they have for these Hoth Rebel Troopers. Lift that up, no second face there. And this is Endor Trooper number two. I think this one looks a lot better than the other one, just my personal opinion, although I'm sure a lot of people love that other guy. Uh, same exact helmet, but different face and prints and everything. And also, like I was saying with that uh, torso to uh, waist print, you can see how the coloring of those packs that he's wearing change on this guy, but not on this guy. So that's kind of what I'm talking about a little bit more detail on what I'm complaining about there. But yeah, no second face, unfortunately, where it would have been appropriate, but still a nice enough figure that's going to be posable in all the normal ways. Absolutely beautiful, isn't she? I love this model. It's one of my favorite hundred dollar range play sets that Lego has ever created. And it's really good. It has one, I don't know if you call it a fatal flaw, but it's a flaw um, in the landing gear that we'll get to in a little bit. But other than that, this set is dang near perfect for me personally. So let's start with the fin. And uh, the way that the fin works is it's kind of built with Technic integrated throughout. So you'll have these rods of Technic and then they kind of connect with these one by one uh, Technic bricks that can then connect to the actual pieces within. And then it creates this really 
really sturdy fin that allows you to pick up the set with no issues. I know with uh, other Imperial shuttle type sets, not the landing craft on the left in 2018, but the one on the right from 2007 is all brick built and the fin would often fall off if you tried to pick it up like this. So it definitely is a great uh, change that they've made with these newer shuttle style models having the Technic built into the fin. It's also very well designed. You can see uh, they've got some hints of gray in there, which I really like. And then you actually have even a little bit more detail jutting out here on the end, tiled up down at the bottom and a little bit of a vent perhaps there right underneath the front of the fin, which is pretty neat. Fin, of course, overlaps on the front side, hanging just over the cockpit there. The wings on either side are designed just about as good as you could ask. There are some inverted tiles on the back side just to hold some stuff down, but for the most part, it's just exposed bottom side of plates there, and it looks pretty nice. At its thickest, it's about a brick thick here, usually about two plates or one plate thick, though, which is about what you want. You want it to stay thin, and they do connect it up with some Technic down here, which connects it into the body of the ship. It actually has a really cool um, angle when and in its landed mode, the wings are actually at a pretty dang nice angle, just slightly oh so slightly not vertical and slightly tilted in which is really cool and accurate and I really really love that so much so you can kind of get an idea of how they were able to achieve that angle if we look at the uh, bottom side here there are some more Technic pieces in there and I will say they are both on hinges on the left and the right here so you can just drop these down uh, one one at a time see if you drop one two three they're about at uh, even there you can just see that that's also a really cool angle like this set is awesome I'm just gushing over it uh, you can see the inside of the wings or the the side that you'll see if you have it flipped out uh, is tiled up which is nice so that is nice and detailed and finished off you have the nice little yellow studs there on the three points and with the camera set down we can go ahead and drop the wings all the way into their normal flight mode which is just gorgeous there you can see that with its wings out it really looks amazing and has just this real size to it i mean for a hundred dollars you're getting a hefty little ship here i mean this thing is huge well put together of course with all the technic that goes into this and just such a beautiful beautiful design obviously you can like flip things like that so they don't have the technic hole uh, exposed there but other than that i mean it is very nicely put together you're gonna have some flaws like where you can see some yellow, unfortunately. But other than that, again, it's it's a beautifully well done model. And its weapons are posable, so you can kind of move these in and out as you wish. I don't really think they're supposed to be, nor do I really uh, find it practical to do stuff like that. It just looks weird, so I tend to leave them as straight on as possible. But they are on hinges, so if you really want to, you can. And there also are, pretty well hidden in here, some spring-loaded shooters. And of course, you could always take these out and replace them with a white 1x4 brick, and maybe that would look a little bit cleaner for these ship's design. But as far as playability goes, this is a really nice and well-designed feature that is easily activated with these white pieces here on the little panel of the wing here between the main body of the ship and the actual wing uh, by pushing on this. And just like that, I'm going to shoot myself. The back side of the ship is pretty well rounded as well here. It's all tiled off here with some thrust engine bits coming out of the back here, which look beautiful. I almost wish, small complaint, that they had only used 1x2 tiles though instead of two 1x4 tiles and then 1x2 uh, tiles just for the continuity so it would look even. Just looks a little bit uneven like that in my opinion, but just a small thing, not really huge. And then you'll also notice even the back side of the wings is tiled and paneled off with some little translucent light pieces or what can be inferred is supposed to be lights there not really sure maybe they aren't supposed to be but that is pretty neat all very well detailed leading up to the bottom side of the ship here which is where you'll find obviously the landing gear and then even this little bit here where you're gonna be able to pull down and find a little ramp that will lead up to the interior of the ship which is pretty neat however if you want to put it back up this like clip back into place you actually have to push back on this yellow piece here so just a small little weird thing about it but it still works just fine now the landing gear is where one of my main complaints lay and that complaint is that when it's in its landed position it's actually not supposed to be in this landed spot on the box it implores you to go ahead and bring the landing gear forward like so so that the ship is a little bit higher off the ground you can use this a little bit easier um, but I find that this position is actually not good so you can actually see it when I put it down you can see that's about flat and if I let go it's gonna lean back a little just a little just got a little wobble to it right so it's not putting enough weight down on the front. Maybe I built this wrong. Maybe something somewhere went wrong and I'm just an idiot. But as far as I can tell, this is correct. And it is not great because what will happen here is if you slightly push the ship, oh, a little, a little more slightly, it'll fall back. 
it rolls back. So that's a problem. I wish that didn't happen. I mean, it's not a problem if you don't push the landing gear out. If you just leave it in its back position, it's not really a problem. You can't push it back. It's not as easy to push forward, but it will still lean forward. So the landing gear is kind of at a tough spot where if they had like a middle spot for it, where it didn't collapse, obviously, um, it this would be a lot better, to be honest. So maybe this is... Oh. Oh. The problem with this is, though, that there is no stopper under there to make it stop at straight vertical, where it would actually work the best, perhaps. It actually uh, really wants to go to its forward position there. So not a huge fan of that, but that's just the way that the landing gear on this set works. It's probably the worst landing gear I've seen on a Star Wars ship, honestly. It's just so confusing to me. I don't know. Maybe you guys have it figured out better than I do, but that is at least the way I've got it built, uh, working like that. The cockpit of the ship is another really good looking one. I think they did an amazing job with it. I think the shaping is a little bit weird compared to some of the other uh, Imperial Shuttle cockpits, but it still is pretty uh, on point in my opinion. It's got a very unique look, which I really like. You have some grill tiles on the front here. Really like the paneling that they did on the side of this to give studs on the side. Looks great. And then you can actually lift this up, giant windshield there. You can lift this up and you'll find the interior space of the cockpit here actually has space for three minifigs perhaps. You could probably cram three in there, but more likely two. And then you have two very large stickered control panels, which is nice. So definitely some nice space in there for some characters. Characters. You can perhaps get Chewbacca in the back, Han in the front, and just like that, you've got actually some very large characters in there. You're definitely not going to get a third minifig in that back spot. Maybe if BB-8 existed at the time, he'd fit right in there, but uh, that is all the space you're going to have there. And there you have Chewbacca and Han in the cockpit. Very nice little space there. Obviously not quite to the uh, size of the UCS one, where you can actually fit all of the minifigs in there. I think four minifigs in there or something, but two is still very nice. So the final bit of playability or space on this set is actually inside the middle section here and unfortunately like with some other set, sets I'm thinking like the Republic attack shuttle from 2009 you can actually lift off the whole assembly here so basically what that set could do is lift off even the top part Unfortunately, with this set, only the side panels can lift up. And even at that, they're a little bit finicky. They can kind of get stuck sometimes, and they're not going to get stuck right now. But I will say I've, I've experienced it where they can get stuck sometimes. But you'll lift them up, and they'll just go above the midsection like that. And getting to the interior space, it's actually quite sizable. And it does something that some other ships do uh, a bad job of, and that is have enough seats for every minifigure. Obviously, we've got Han and Chewie in the front. But we'll also be able to fit Leia and the other two uh, Rebel Troopers on the seats inside so you can actually fit all your figures in this ship there's a little backpack on this here where you can actually hold some weapons as well in the backpack you can actually put on one of the rebel troopers if you want i just don't have it on him this just goes on this little jumper plate there where it was we can get it in there i'm working around the camera so it's going to look a little bit harder than it normally is if you just have this i mean it's still a small space to get into which is why i say that uh some other ships do this better where you can actually lift off the whole top assembly but with the giant fin on top I can understand why that is not a thing on this particular set. So um, not much else going on on that side of the interior, actually. There's no like panels or anything. Taking a look on the other side here though, you'll see obviously you have your spring-loaded shooter in there just like the other side, but we actually have a giant box, which is pretty neat um, compared to the other side. I think this side is a little bit more interesting. The box has the Rebel insignia there. It's a giant yellow box, can't miss it. You can open this up and there are a couple of thermal detonators to help you try and blow your way into the Endor bunker which is really neat so those are very well kept in there and let's go ahead and fill out those minifig seats and see how the space works out and with our final rebel trooper in there the interior is completely chocked full of minifigures so i was about to give you my final thoughts but i noticed something as i lifted up the cockpit here like like all i'm doing is lifting up the cockpit why is that a thing let me try something i got an idea maybe i did build this wrong no well no, because that can't be moved. Yeah, that can't be moved forward because that would then block this. Because that is holding the crossbar on those pieces. So that can't be moved. That is a wild setup, huh? That is very interesting. So we'll just keep that back then in the, the bad landing position. Interesting. So should you buy the Imperial Shuttle Tidarium? Absolutely, I would recommend it to anybody who is even thinking about it. I mean, I love this ship so much, so obviously there's a lot of bias there, but there's bias in everything, so what do you care? That rhymed very well. 
I like that. I'm going to keep that saying now. But anyway, this ship is amazing. I mean, it looks beautiful. It's got its own kind of unique Imperial shuttle look. It's not quite as good looking as the UCS one, as you would expect, but it's much better than the two previous play versions from, I believe, 2001 and 2005. So that'll be an interesting comparison one day when I have those other two sets. But the figures are amazing. That Leia is incredible. Even underneath that little piece of camouflage there, Han Solo probably not as great as Leia, in my opinion. You're running the mill Chewbacca there in a couple of Rebel Troopers are always nice for your Endor scene there. And, oh my goodness, just so beautiful. Great play feature with the little spring-loaded shooters built into the wings there. You have plenty of interior space, both in the cockpit and in the midsection there. It is amazing. $100 back in the day, retail price. That's about $110 in today's money. And on eBay, you can expect to pay between $150 and $170, which is a little bit pricey, but for a older ship that's retired now, it makes sense. It's amazing. I'm surprised it's not even worth more to be honest so I love this Imperial shuttle I hope you do too one day if you don't own it or maybe you just enjoyed this review I'm giving the set a 9 out of 10 I mean obviously the the real fatal flaw in this set is the landing gear it's just a problem it, and there's no way to fix it from what I could tell looking underneath the ship there so it just is what it is the minifigs are great the shuttle is great they don't include any like dumb throw-ins that kind of add on to the ship and are kind of you're going to lose them to time it's just the ship and I always uh, enjoy that about some Lego Star Wars sets so let me know you guys think down in the comment section below leave a like if you enjoyed the review you can check out other lego star wars reviews and videos on my youtube channel thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next one peace out